my name's Sean. Um, today we're going to go over um, how to create a Valentine's Scatter Day design. Um, so right now, has anyone uh, messed around with the scatter designs yet? Okay, so we get about half and half. All right. So over here on our left side on the Corel Draw, um, you're going to have this polygon shape. So if you're working out of a version other than X8, um, you might have it this layout a little bit different. Um, but we want to get to our basic shapes tool. Then when we click that, you'll see the tools come up, a toolbar pop up right here. And when I click on this, it'll show you all these different shapes. So it already has a heart already made. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. And then we're just going to draw that or just click. And as we pull, you'll see the, star, the heart getting larger and larger. If you hold control on your keyboard, you'll see that the heart becomes a perfect shape. So if I let go of control, you can manipulate the, shot, or the heart to whatever size and shape you want. If you wanted a perfect heart, you just hold control and then let go. All right. So does anyone have any questions about getting the heart out and then drawing a perfect heart? And don't be afraid to ask questions. We don't have too, too many people in here today. So if you guys want to see anything over again or have any questions, just type them out um, and I'll be happy to answer. So the first thing we want to do with um, our heart is we're going to resize it. Now with the scatter effect, you got to keep in mind that, you know, we want to try to have the end result around anywhere from 9 to 10 inches. Um, it can be a little bit larger, but we're going to try to keep it around that um, range. So our beginning heart, we don't really want it 7.2 inches because when we add the scatter, it's probably going to add another 4 or 5 inches around this heart. So then we'd be looking at a 11 to 12 inch design. So instead, we're just going to make this 5 inches. And you'll see that when this is locked up here, um, it will keep this heart in uh, proportionate, so it will keep it 5 by 5. Okay. So we're going to go to our design wizard, and we're going to go to the place and fill tab. And this is how we're going to add our scatter effect around the heart. All right. So first thing we want to do is we want to click outside. We want to choose add stones. Um, with the islands, this part we're just going to kind of play around with until you really get it down. Um, there's really no right or wrong islands in here. Um, the more islands you have, the larger your design is going to be. Um, so for this one, we'll just start around 10. Um, contour, you can leave that on auto or you can do around 0 0.09. So we're going to leave, we did our islands, our space, and our fill line spacing will stay the same. Our hatch angle will leave there, and we're going to leave this corner detect angle unchecked. All right. So we're going to come down to our effects area, and we have our decrease count by and our fade box. So we're going to fill these two out before um, we hit the island fill. So the decrease count by is just telling us that. So we we decide we want ten islands. So after each island, it's going to decrease the stones in that island by whatever we put in this box. So for this, we'll try 8. And a fade by, uh, I'll show you, it's kind of hard to explain, but when you see it, um, you'll definitely see the difference. The fade by is going to affect how far your next row of stones is placed. Um, so for this one, we'll do 0.01. So once we have all our settings filled in, you're just going to click your heart and hit Island Fill. All right. So just by clicking one button, you get this nice scatter look. Now if we zoom into our design, you can see that a couple of these stones are touching. So this is a really easy fix with the wizard. All we do is click on our stone. And right now, they're all on these blue paths. So I'm really clicking this whole path when I click one of these stones. And then I can just either add or subtract a stone from this path. And you're going to do that by hitting these two arrows on your design wizard. So if I go down one stone, you'll see now that it's a perfect fit. It doesn't 
hit any extra stones. And again, with this row, I'm going to do the same thing. And now none of those stones are overlapping anywhere. So it's a nice, clean island. And we don't have any overlapping stones. All right. So if I wanted to, you kind of see how we have this line right here. And the stones aren't really touching this line. So let me make a quick duplicate. And just to kind of show you the difference, you can do really quick. So if we wanted to, I could just take my original designs, clear the path. And now I have my perfect scatter set up. Okay. If you want to, you also have the option of same thing we just did with the first two lines, but we're going to line it up so there's a stone in the center of all these areas. So I'm going to select each path, and I'm holding shift while I select each path. And then I'm going to just add one stone. So now you can see that there's a perfect line of stones. Let's fix that one. And just by doing that, it really changes the whole pattern of the design. So now you can see it has one path going down the center and up top. So it just adds a little bit different look to this design um, and just cleans it up a little bit better. All right. So now we'll kind of show you the different effects we get by messing with the islands, the decrease count, and the fade. All right. So does anyone have any questions about what we've done so far? Does anyone need to see any any of these steps again? All right, I think we're all good. So with this heart, we're going to keep it same size. Um, this time we're just going to decrease the islands. So now we're going to do seven islands. But since we have less islands, um, we can increase the decrease uh, count by. So we'll do 12, and then we'll add a fade of 0.03. So I hit Island Fill. And again, you might have to adjust these first rows. So it's just clicking on the path and adding or subtracting one stone. Okay. So you can see the fade on this is pretty large from each stone. You'll see it gets larger and larger. Now, if I did the same settings, but I did the, crease, the fade by 0.01, You can see that this design bear it doesn't go out as far as the one next to it. So by messing around with the fade, by increasing or decreasing it, you'll see that it gives you different effects and looks of the um, scatter. All right. So you see how these stones are a lot closer. How these ones, the farther they go out, the bigger the fade is. So that's all going to be controlled by your fade by. So does anyone have any questions about the fade by or how switching the island um, can give you different looks? All right. So let's just create one more and we'll just do something random. Um, we'll do 12 islands with a decrease um, by 5 and a fade by 0 0.01. All right. So let's go back and edit these stones real quick. Now again, just some of these areas need touched up. Now I'll clear pass. And now I have my scatter. And you can see when I put these next to each other, just by messing around with the decrease count by, you can see the different scatter effects you'll get as well. All right, so there's multiple patterns you can get just by um, changing the islands, the decrease count, and the fade. All right, so which fill do you guys like better? The one out of these two right here, do we like the one on the left or the one on the right? All right, I think it, the left has an overwhelming um, response. So we'll go ahead and proceed with the left. So I'll go ahead and delete these out of our way. Now from here, 
we just want to add our text. So we're looking right in about now, this design is eight and a half inches. Um, so if we wanted to, we could go back and add a couple islands um, just to make it a little bit larger if we want. But again, eight and a half is a, uh, a pretty good size for most uh, adult shirts as well. So this is a good area to be in. So after this, we're going to go ahead and add our text to go through the design. So with this, we're just going to write out V and then mine. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a rhinestone true type font. Um, I've already had this one picked out. It's a nice script font. It's TRW03 superscript and it's a multi stone. So with our multi stones, it gives you a nice look um, with a combination of stones. So if I have this selected as tens, it's going to give me a combination of tens and sixes. Ten being the larger stones and six being the smaller. If I go to 16s, it's going to give me a combination of 16 and 10. So it's just going to take this, whatever your largest size is selected, and then go down the next size for the smaller stones. All right. So I want to work with 10s and 6s, so I'm going to go ahead and choose 10s. And then I'm going to hit the resize. Now, with these multi-stone um, fonts, most of the time you choose a font, and you hit this resize button, you're going to just hit yes. But since we're working with a combination of stones, you'll actually hit no on this. Uh, just for these com anything with the multi stone, you'll always hit no. So when I do that, it's going to tell the wizard that these are all going to be perfect sixes. So when I come up here and check, they're perfect sixes. And then my larger stones will be perfect tens. All right. So everyone, see how we did that right there? All right. So the way this font, um, after we resize it, there's a pretty big gap between B and mine. Um, if I were to go ahead and group this, it's 11 inches wide. And when I put it on top of my design, it just looks a little bit too spaced out for me. So what I want to do instead is just before I edit this design anymore, I'm just going to scoot this mine, the word mine, just in a little bit just like that. All right. So now I can go ahead and group it. It's gone down to 10 inches rather than 11 and now it's a little bit easier to work with in my design. All right. So let's go ahead and change the color the background and now we can see this a little bit clearer. So from here it's just how you want this to look. You know if you just wanted the design like that we're good to go. But instead, I'm going to make a duplicate. And what I like to do is take our design and let me move this one over a little bit. So right now we have the B mind grouped together. So if I take my heart and I go ahead and group that and then hit P as in Paul, it will center my design. And then I'm going to go ahead and center my text as well. So I'm just hitting the letter P on my keyboard and I'll go ahead and center that for me. All right. So once we have that centered, I can just, when I click on my design, my B mind, since it's grouped together, it's just going to, you'll see this box come around the design, the text. All right. So if I click on this arrow, once it's already selected, you'll see these boxes turn into, you know, crooked arrows. You'll see the arrows up and down, left and right. We want to use the ones on the corners and it will let us spin our design. All right, you guys see how we do that? So just the ones on the corners, we're going to go ahead and uh, allow us to kind of angle our text so however we want. We don't want to use the ones on the sides or the top because that's going to actually um, manipulate the stones at the end and we'll have to resize everything. All right, so we're just going to use the ones on the corners. Go ahead and turn that a little bit maybe a little more and then we have our design ready and we know that it's already centered um, if you want to you can always hit P again you'll see it move just a little bit and then you know that it's centered so I'm gonna go ahead and move it just like that and then we have our design lined up alright so 
does anyone have any questions about the text, uh, moving it or lining it up, or centering your design? So we're all good here. So the next step is we want to get all of the stones behind the text out. So using the wizard, does anyone know what tool we're going to use next to get all these stones, the blue stones, out behind the black stones? All right, correct. So someone said it. Um, we have the tools over here, um, the mark top overlap or the mark bottom overlap. So in this case, we want the blue stones away. So we can tell that the black stones are actually laying on top of the blue. So in this case, we're going to do a mark bottom overlapping stones. Okay, so when I highlight my entire design and go ahead and click this mark bottom overlapping stones, It's just going to run through here real quick, and then it's going to highlight all these stones red. So when it does that, you can see that it has all these stones actually selected right now. So if you don't click off anything, you can actually come up to this little arrow, this little X, and just grab those stones and move them away. And then just hit delete. And now, none of these stones are overlapping anymore. All right. And since since this is a scatter effect design, we really don't have to come back and worry too much about cleaning this design up. We definitely can. There's some areas that we can add some stones. But for the most part, this design is a scatter so that you're really not going to see those small um, little areas that can add stone. Right. So on your wizard, so someone asked where the remove stone is. You actually, once we do the mark overlap or the mark bottom overlapping stones red down here on your wizard. So when I do that, it's going to automatically go through the design and grab all the stones that are overlapping. So once it does that, it actually has these selected right now. So if I go ahead and just grab that little X there, you'll see that mouse turn into a four point. That's telling you that I can grab this area. So I'm just dragging, clicking and dragging away. And then I can just go ahead and delete. Or if you do make the mistake, since this design, we're not, we don't have any red in this design right now. Say I clicked off of it after I changed my stones or I did the mark um, bottom overlap. Well, I can just click on one of these stones, these red ones. And my designs group so I'm going to ungroup it first then click on one of these red stones and I can select all the same color so now it's going to select all those red stones again I can pull away and just delete so if you do make the mistake of clicking off right after you um, do one of these mark overlaps or mark top or bottom just go ahead and grab one of the red stones select all and then you can delete again Alright, so from here, we're really just um, adding the finishing touches to the design. Um, you know, one easy way with the, the heart or the scatter to add another effect is just by changing the colors. So right now we still have our text grouped together. If it wasn't, we can just select one stone and then select um, left click the same color. And then that will go ahead and grab all of our black stones again. All right. So now I can just group that together. So it's selecting our other design too. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And go ahead and select the black stones. And then I can group everything together using the wizard. All right. So from here, now I can just go over different parts of my design. Highlight that section, change it to light pink, come to this middle section, go a little bit darker, and this last section, section we'll just do a solid TRW pink. All right. So when we put this on a background, 
change our center text to white, you can see how this design really starts popping. So does anyone have any um, questions about changing the colors or grabbing uh, you know, anything that we've gone over so far? All right, everything's good. All right, so I mean that pretty much completes our um, scatter effect design. Um, from here, you can just run through and create the templates, and then it will separate everything for you, and then you can go ahead and send it to your cutter. Um, again, since this is grouped right now, I can select my design and go ahead and change all this back to one color if you want. Whatever you think looks better, um, from this point, it's just changing the color. Um, so someone came in late. Um, we're going to have this video up very shortly. Um, we'll have it up by tomorrow. Um, and we're actually going to do some type of Valentine's Day giveaway with these scatter designs. We've created a few extra ones. Um, so you guys definitely make sure to look for that on our Facebook. We're going to go ahead and do a voting process. And we're going to go um, end up giving away one of these scatter designs for free. Um, so pay attention to that the next couple of days on uh, Facebook. Um, because there's a few different options we have and uh, we have I think there's gonna be about three different options so you guys can vote on which one you like the best and we're gonna make that available um, for everybody for free right. but again this this webinar should be listed um, no later than tomorrow so if you did come in a little late um, you'll definitely be able to view it again um, but does anyone need to see anything else um, we can go over you know the scatter effects um, the fonts, anything like that. Again, um, we can we still have a little bit of time left, so I'll be happy to go over anything. Right. Yeah. So someone asked if the scatter still works on like smaller hearts and everything like that. So it definitely does. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll do just a smaller design. Um, so again, this heart now is only three by three. So sometimes when you work with um, scatters, some of the errors you might get are, let's just say we're only doing eight islands and we're gonna decrease the count by 15. Well, sometimes when you do this, you'll start to get a couple designs like this and then you'll start to see these extra rows behind it that are completely filled. So what that's pretty much telling us is that the decrease count is um, too large so if we decrease if we change that and we do the same design this time we only decrease it by let's try eight now we don't run into that same error so if you guys are getting the different results and you're getting you know full rows of stones afterwards that's just because this decrease count is um, too high so you'll just have to change that and um, you'll start to see that it you end up with design more like this um, rather than extra rows behind it right. so someone asked just to go over the scatter effect real quick so that's no problem so we're gonna work with a five inch heart for this design now again the islands um, are just how many rows of stones you want outside of it the decreased count is by how many if we have eight islands whatever this this is going to decrease each island by eight stones so by the last stone it's going to be decreased you know almost by 64 stones all right so that's kind of what those tell us and then the fade by is just how far each of these next rows are going to fade so the bigger the fade the bigger um, the, the end design is going to be so let's just do a couple examples real quick and we'll make all the starting parts the same size but just change the fade the islands and the decrease just to see the different kind of scatters you can really get all right so the first one we'll do 12 islands with a decrease by five and a fade by 0 0.03 all right so we'll hit island fill 
And again, since we did 12 islands, you'll see it turns into a pretty big design. And the next step is just clearing the path. And then you'll see our scatter effect. So let's go ahead and change this to blue. Get rid of our heart. And then you'll see that nice scatter design. So the fade by, you can see because it's such a 0 0.03, um, it doesn't sound like a big fade, but it actually is when we're working with the rhinestones. So we'll do the same settings, and all we're going to change is the fade. So we'll do 0 0.01. So you can see right away that this design doesn't go out nearly as far as our first design. All right, so we'll clear our paths. And now you can see just by changing that fade by, it gives us a completely different looking design. So the last one, let's do the same thing. So to clear the paths, when we when we create this design, and we went over this in the beginning too, when we first make this design, this first row almost, not always, but will need to be edited. So if you click on a stone and then add or subtract one with these arrows, you'll make that a nice shape. Um, we won't have any overlapping stones. You can see on this one too, they're touching just a little bit. So we'll just detract, uh, subtract one stone and now you have a nice clean look. All right. So once we clean up our design, we can go ahead and highlight our entire design. So the next step is clearing paths from the selected object. So these islands that we created are all on paths. Those blue lines between the stones, those are called paths. So we want to get rid of all those. So we just come and click this clear button, or the clear islands, or clear path, sorry. Just left click, and then you'll see those blue lines disappear. Now I can man manually grab any one of these stones and edit it if I wanted to. So just like that, and if you know, with the with this design, it will keep the original heart. So if you wanted to, bam, you have a nice multi-deck design just like that. No editing involved, and it's ready to go. All right. Now if we want to make this three colors, I can just grab each side, add a color, and now this is a three-color stone design, along with. Um, a multi-deck heart, so a vinyl heart. So does anyone have any more questions about the scatter effect or any of the tools that it involves? Well, I think we're all good then. Um, thank you guys for all coming. Again, this video will be um, edited and we'll get it up as quickly as possible and don't forget we will be voting on some of these designs um, in the upcoming I think we're gonna try to get it all done by this weekend so we can get that design out to you guys by um, a few days early so you can start making these for Valentine's Day so make sure to check Facebook later today and start voting on that design and then this video again will be up um, hopefully tomorrow but uh, thank you guys so much for attending um, if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and give us a call at 941-755-1696 uh, or shoot us an email at info at the rhinestoneworld.com. Again, this was Sean, and uh, thank you guys for attending. Um, hopefully, we'll see you guys soon.